Hey everybody, this is Mike of the Now It's Dark Movie Podcast, here to talk about Twin Peaks The Return. And this is Tim. And for everyone listening, make sure that you are caught up on The Return. Uh, we will be talking about the ending of The Return. There will be a lot of spoilers here, so make sure that you're ready and caught up. Just so you know, this isn't just going to be about uh, the finale of Twin Peaks The Return. This is going to be about the entire show. What happened, why it's important, and how it maybe has changed television forever. So let's get into some theories about what, what's going on in this series and what this series was really about. Yeah. Because I think it's pretty relevant for today. I think what a lot of people look for in Twin Peaks is this kind of surreal... Uh, eccentric take on rural America. Yeah. And I think what the the new show is, is really about is kind of, it's responding to the social decline of America in terms of deindustrialization of rural America. Yeah. In terms of the opioid epidemic, in terms of rising suicide rates, um, in terms of social alienation, mm-hmm. uh, gun violence. There's so much in terms of what's been going on in America that I find represented in the the return. A really powerful image at the beginning of the series in episode one is when you see the sawmill that's it's just been shuttered. Yeah. You know, the what's been keeping this town going um is is just stopped. Partly because of the fire, presumably right. that happened in the original series. But I mean they never they never got it going again. They never rebuilt it. Yeah. So what do you think in terms of just Twin Peaks, the return as being kind of sociology in a way? Oh, I agree with you completely. Um, Everything that you've mentioned, I mean, you've got Dr. Jacoby talking about shovel your way out of the shit. Right. You know, and he's just going on and on about, uh, you know, corporate conspiracies and how uh, everything is... Everyone is kind of playing a game against you, and you're always going to lose. Right. And he's not really providing any evidence for what he's he's talking about, and it's in spite of that, but maybe because that he's that he's not providing any evidence that people just eat this up. Right. You know, and you know, regarding the gun violence, there was a guy who pulled a gun on uh, Tim Roth and uh, Jennifer Jason Lee's character because they were in his in his driveway. Yeah. This you Polish know? accountant, who, yeah, out of a, nowhere, a Polish accountant, and um, there's that's definitely a comment on the the gun violence that goes on, and you know the movies or at school, as well as the kids who, while uh, Bobby and Shelley, yeah, are having a conversation in in the double R, yep. um, there's just a gunshot that rings out, and it's a kid who's who, just found a gun in the back seat of a car, right, that he's riding in, right, yeah. And then as well, like right behind them, there's this hysterical screaming woman and her her daughter or what we think is her her daughter or niece that's afflicted by this strange disease or something. She seems like a zombie almost. You know, there's so many people living in in trailer parks and everything. There's a really heartbreaking moment when a guy um, says he's he's going into town to sell blood. Yeah, that was really uh, powerful. Carl Rod kind of helps him out. Yeah. Says, I don't like it when people have to sell their blood just to eat. Right. You and know? that's a kind of comment, I think, on the economic hardship yep. that's going on. But And that, that comes right on the heels of hearing how much work this guy has been doing. Yeah. He said, did you, uh, examples like, did you mow the lawn? Did you get paid for that? Right. No. Right. Did you do this? Did you get paid for that? No. And that's why he's selling blood. As well as the, uh, the suicide of... Uh, Steve. Yeah. Steve. Um, that just kind of, he's not a particularly good guy in the no. show, um, but he's commits suicide. Um, it's never directly shown, but that's, that's the assumption. Yeah. Um, there's a, a number of scenes of kind of sick people. Um, there's, there's just the re- drunk in the jail. At the, the drunk end. in the jail is disgusting. Oh, he, he is just repulsive. There are a few instances of um, comments or commentary on uh, healthcare in America too. Mm-hmm. There's that school teacher who gets beat up by Richard Horn, right, to to an inch of her life, right, and she needs surgery, but she has no health insurance, and she's right. a school teacher, right. She's a school teacher who can't afford her medical bills, and then um, to a much lesser extent, there's that girl. I think at the end of part nine, 
who has a, a really terrible rash yeah. under her arm. And that seems like such a quick fix, but you kind of get the, the feeling like she probably can't afford to go to get a consultation about that either. There, there is so many fights at the roadhouse as well. There's, yeah. there's a lot of infidelity that's, that's being suggested. It's such a common theme in Lynch's work that you see an exploration of kind of like Americana, beautiful, wholesome mm-hmm. Americana. Uh, the opening of Blue Velvet is a perfect yep. example where you see white picket fences and yep. roses. And but then it leads to a guy getting a heart attack on his yard. Well, that's the underbelly. Right. And... You get a sense in Lynch's work that early on there is a center of America. There is a kind of wholesome a surface yep. and an underbelly to that. And what you get a, a strong sense of in The Return is that there is no underbelly because the underbelly is the surface. The surface of America, especially rural America, is just this insane, violent, sick, decaying thing. Yeah. With a few kind of um, odd good people or good things that happen. But the prevailing trend is towards, you know, these really destructive things happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I know you had a slightly different take on what this was kind of all about. Right. Well, I, I agree with everything that you're saying. I mean, as far as the themes go. Um, that was something cause you started the series before I did. Right. And even before I had started the return, you were already talking to me about how this is the, the decline of middle-class America and everything. Right. You know, so I was always very aware of that. Right. Watching it. But especially after having seen the finale, because there was a question that I was wondering going into the finale or the last two parts, part 17 and 18, was will we have questions answered? Because there were so many questions after part 16. Right. Was, um, you know, for instance, what what happened to Audrey? That right. was a big question. Right. What happened to Richard? Is Richard actually dead? Because he's electrocuted to hell and then just disappears. But what happened to him? So there was a whole stuff, a whole lot of things like that. Like, will we have questions answered? Right. And then it turns out, no, we're not going to have many questions answered, if any. There's a lot of loose threads. There's a lot, a lot of loose ends. I mean, Audrey didn't even appear in the last two episodes. Right. She didn't appear at all. Right. You know, Uh, there are still so many things, um, you know, all these names that are being thrown out like Billy. We don't know who Billy is. I kind of think Billy is the drunk in the cell. But, you know, we didn't get that answered. For that's instance. that's been a suspicion for a while yeah. that Billy was the drunk in the cell, but yeah. it's, it's it's totally left hanging. Yeah, it, it's left hanging. So I think overall, the way that I've kind of made peace with the ending, so to speak, and because I didn't dislike the ending, I didn't dislike anything. What I think I might have liked a bit of a tighter resolution because I wasn't. I was never expecting there was going to be a second part of the return, but I think the way that I kind of came to appreciate it was that Twin Peaks The Return is kind of like a very elaborate joke with a very long setup that you're just waiting for the punchline, but then the punchline is some anticlimactic pun or something like that. Something really goofy, but not really funny, not really worth the payoff. But that in itself is the joke, is that you're you're just getting fed all of all of this information in anticipation of something that never comes. And I think right there is why you can appreciate the return. And in a sense, the original Twin Peaks, because in the original Twin Peaks, Dale Cooper goes through all of this just to become the very evil that he's fighting. Right. And this as well in the return you go through all of this you know 16 hours 18 hours just for nothing to get answered the real dale cooper you want to see not really showing up he shows up very briefly and then you know there's the two characters dale and laura have time traveled and that's it when I think about it like that, it was just an elaborate joke, not mean spirited or anything like that, but just as a work of art in itself, 
just an elaborate joke with a very long setup and no real punchline. That's something to admire right there. Absurdity. An absurd... Absurdity, yeah, in, exactly. In the full meaning of that. Yeah, because... And that's kind of reflective on the absurd situation that these innocent, hardworking, middle-class people uh, are finding themselves in. Like, they're just their lives have just fallen apart. Um, middle-class America is falling apart. Everything is absurd these days. It's an absurd situation. And... Um, I think that's made even more relevant after one of my favorite moments in the whole series, which is Gordon Cole's turnip joke. Right. You know, he, he's talking about a, a to a French woman who says uh, someone that she knows who's a, a turnip farmer. Is that right? A turnip yeah. farmer is uh, missing. And then he just says, all right, well, don't worry. He'll turn up eventually. Right. And there's no payoff. No right. one's laughing. Albert's not laughing. Gordon Cole's not laughing. And he just says it doesn't translate well. She's French. Right. And that's kind of, to me, how the whole series ends up. Right. It's just an elaborate joke with a stupid punchline, but that's that's the point. Well, I actually, I think it's it's profound, the ending, um, because I think you got to take the, the return as a name for this series. It's yeah. not called Twin Peaks Season 3. It's oh, no, called The no. Return. I never approached it as Season 3. Right, but The Return has a special meaning, and I think... Not only is the show commenting on the social reality of America, but it's also addressing the desire for a lot of Americans to return to an imagined um, better past. What uh, Ned Flanders and The Simpsons refers to as the America in the minds of Republicans. Right. Yeah. But also, like, for a lot of people, things probably were better in in a lot of ways, Um in the past. Right. Um, you can look at Twin Peaks from the original series and look at it now. It was better in so many ways back then. Um, and it's addressing this desire to return, this nostalgia for the past, both in the minds of, you know, middle class Americans struggling, but also in the minds of Twin Peaks viewers wanting to see coffee and cherry pie yeah. and all of these things they want to see audrey from the start they want to see all of these moments come back yeah and they want to be back in this world with the same familiar characters the same familiar stories they want the to same see Dale familiar Cooper. music there wasn't a lot of the the music used at all and exactly it was know. it was intentionally unsettling and disturbing yeah. and and um i also think and this is what makes it very profound for me is that not only is it addressing the social conditions and the nostalgia for the past, but it's also doing, at the same time, addressing the media landscape of all of these reboots and remakes mm -hmm. and revivals of old shows and old movies yeah. that in a weird way are, are trying to, I think, comfort people who are you know, longing for a, a, a past version of America, an America from their childhood. And... It's really taking on the idea of what does it mean to return to something, both in, in terms of trying to go back to your own social reality from the past, but also a movie or a TV show trying to go back and recapture something from the past and remake it or revisit it. Its answer or its, its response is that the only thing you can really return to is trauma, in a way, the only thing that returns, at least in these social conditions, is the trauma of the past. Yeah. It's the trauma of Laura Palmer. It's the failure of Dale Cooper to solve this, to, to prevent another murder from happening. It's the same sort of town going through these same changes, repeating it again and again, never to escape its essential problems. And I think there's there's no better representation than this, than just that scream mm -hmm. of Laura Palmer, which comes up again and again in every iteration of this yeah. show. This bone-chilling scream. It's such an impressive shriek, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. She but it's, just it's so that. full of, like, it's, it's horrifying, but it's also very sad. Yeah. Because it's just the most primal... Um, scream of this this woman who's gone through such a traumatic event and i think it's kind of 
it signals that the the trauma of the past can't be extinguished simply by finding the killer or simply by the town you know recovering and getting over it there is something that's kind of that supersedes those things or that that over overflows from that and you see that in a lot of lynch's work i think but you know he never expresses it more powerfully than now well at the same time showing that you know for a tv show to return to the the same landscape that was there before is not a comforting thing Mm -hmm. nor should it be yeah the show's ultimate kind of moral um statement i think is that returning is a very painful thing and uh there's there was a great quote that i read it says uh, but instead of being comforting and unchanged Twin Peaks turned out to be deeply sad. Yeah. Such is the natural result of our culture's current mania for what used to be. Lynch and Frost simply had the guts to point it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's ultimately why this is such a profound show. Yeah. Um, It changes what TV is about, both as a new um, original, you know, form of programming with the possibilities for new types of shows, but also reviving or returning to an old show or old movie and carrying it forward. Thanks for listening, everybody, to the Now It's Dark movie podcast. We will be back again. If you haven't listened to our full podcast, check out the links below and leave us any comments that you'd like. If you have any questions for us, just let us know in the comments below. Uh, We will be addressing questions and and comments that that you send to us in future videos and future podcasts and if you'd like to see more twin peaks related content uh let us know because we have a lot more we could talk about with it and thanks for listening we uh we had a lot of fun